Welcome to Super Meat World! In today's update, we're gonna tackle a chapter entitled The Incident, which I've made! And we didn't find it into the chapters list. Surprise, surprise! So, in order for me to not be too roast in the glasses about the entire chapter, well, I've invited a level creation expert on this matter, so roughly smile. Hello! Hey, thanks again for having me. Yeah, it was just so fun having you the first time around, so figure I might just bring you back here. Very cool. Well, we got a lot of rockets to look at here. Yeah, basically the incident was a, was a chapter that I've made in order to experiment with rocket launchers and make it so that the whole aim of the chapter was to put in phases on twitch reflexes and moving around a whole lot faster in all of this. Basically, this whole chapter is all about keeping you constantly moving. Yeah, by the way, this one Soblin on the, on the side here can pretty much just take you by surprise. It did, and it got me the first time I did it. <laughs> Yeah, it pretty much guts everyone. In fact, in the first version of this map, there were even there were even two saw blades, just to be even more annoying. That's rude. <laughs> yeah, there were a lot of asshole decisions into this chapter early on. I mean, even this was kind of a dick move because you never see this rocket launcher at all. So it was kind of a poor foresight of my handle for this one level. I love how the saw blade rolls down the hill, like how you increase the speed of the acceleration through the waypoints. That was yeah. really nice. Yeah, I had to use waypoints in order to do this, and I pretty much made it so that every single time it will hit a slope, it will go, it will take faster and faster to go down here. And yeah, this level was featured by Team Meat because I don't know, I think they just really like the rotating platform all over the place, which forms some sort of octagon. Yeah, it's very cool looking, actually. It reminds me a little bit of like a level from Super Mario World. Yeah. <laughs> And yeah, that was one of the levels that I've made pretty much at the ending of this chapter, just because I wanted animals into the chapter. Considering that at one point it was pretty much impossible to have animals into this whole chapter, but basically the gimmick of this level was to have it so that you will have really tiny platforms and you will have to dodge all of the rockets. And at the end, yeah, this key is a trap because it makes it so that there's another rocket launcher but for the, the end of the level, there are larger platforms, so the rest of the level gets easier to get across. I don't even think I noticed that there was a bandage over there when I was playing through this. Yeah, this bandage really is a dick to obtain. It pretty much oh. boils down to luck, actually. <laughs> but then again, I pretty much was aware of that. I pretty much said, if you can get this bandage, then you're good enough to beat the rest of this chapter. Yeah, I mean, having the tiny blocks just by itself is probably hard enough, then adding the rockets, then adding another rocket launcher. Yeah, Very but thankfully the... Yeah, but thankfully the level is pretty short. Usually most of the stages in this chapter are kept short. That does help. I, I, yeah, I just figured, hey, I'm gonna make the levels really hard, but I'm gonna make them reasonably accessible by making it, by making it so that not every single mistake will be costing. And yeah, you have to press all of the three buttons at once, otherwise you cannot break through the blocks here. And also, this was probably the shortest level that I've ever made for the entire chapter. I've it only took me two hours to make this wow. level. Not bad. Yeah. I mean, it came out okay for the for the time that it took. And yeah, this bandage, bandage is all about is really time. Crazy man. Yeah, but it's just pretty much one simple jump that you have to make. The timing, however, has to be really good. This level drove me nuts. The uh, homing <laughs> saw blade, I couldn't stand it. Like, I, I'm not sure if I even finished this one. No less got the bandage. <laughs> yeah, and in the earlier version of this level, this was an even crueler level because there were no walls in. There were no walls in order to prevent the saw blade from shooting anywhere else, and finally there was another rocket launcher at the ending. Mm. I like Just the structure to be... of this one a lot, actually. It's sort of shaped like a number 9, and I didn't expect that I was going to end up looping back around and going underneath where I started. That was like a cool surprise. Yeah, I actually like the look of this level, but at the same time I just figured, holy shit, I looped the same tile over and over again everywhere, and this kind of makes the level look a little bit sloppy at the same time. In fact, I'm not really too happy with the middle part of this level, and this bandage is a bit, because you have to wall jump at a very precise timing in order to get it. Yeah, I mean, if I was going to do anything with the decoration, I probably would have added some, like, different patterns and stuff going on in the solid looking areas just to break it up but you know yeah, it's not huge but back when i made this level i d 
yeah, back when I made this level, I didn't really knew all about this. In fact, I'm not really good with graphical things in overhaul, and this was pretty much my main downfall as a level designer for this game. It's a lot of work, though. If you have as many tiles as that, it gets seriously tedious to keep going through and editing little things. Like, my level Sandy Mountain, that was the most tiles I've ever had in a level, and it took me, like, a week to decorate the whole thing. Yeah, because this level is really huge. And yeah, we're talking about the level into uh, his, chap his other chapter, which is called the Lion Key. Hopefully, we'll get to hit that eventually oh, because so. it's yeah, because it's worth showcasing. I don't know. Would you say it's harder than this one? I feel like it might not be. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a different. I mean, kind of the, hard. yeah. This level, however, is kind of interesting because you have two different paths through the entire level. Depending on the way that you take, which is decided by the panic switch, you either get through this part which requires precision, or you go to the other path which requires more uh, reflexes in order to avoid rockets through tiny hallways. I think this is probably my favorite one out of the whole chapter, actually. Uh, the yeah. way that you set up these two different paths was quite smart, actually, and I, I don't think I've done one like that before. Yeah, I was kind of proud of the way that I did this one level, and how come pretty much every single road in this had its own drawbacks as well than merits. Yep. In fact, if you wanted to finish the level quickly, this is the shortest way in order to take. The other one is longer, but if you want to get the bandage, you have to take the rocket launcher route. Oh, I see you used over the max number of keys to uh, break the physics engine for them. Uh, thankfully, that didn't seem to be an issue for you, though. Uh, actually, I just made it so that the keys will hang in midair thanks to waypoints. Right. Yeah, uh, what it is is I think it's everything after six keys and they will stop falling on gravity. Yeah, something like that. I know that one of my levels had to be completely changed because of this yeah. one detail. <laughs> because I wanted the keys to drop into... But we'll come back to it eventually because this will be eventually relevant but here is the other path of the level the way that we want to take in order to get the bandage yeah this switch that we just press is the one that opens up the way to the bandage and it's pretty uh, <laughs> <That's rough. laughs> yeah that really was not the best performance out there i gotta say oh you put it right at the end too so you get through the entire level and then just immediately splat <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> In fact, that wasn't even the fault of the level here. That was pretty much just me who completely fucked it up. Yeah, you have to be really careful jumping up there before your entire wall oh, disappears man. because otherwise there is no way to get the bandage after that. Yeah, you don't even get a wall to jump off of. You have to jump off of that block. That's definitely tough. Yeah. So we're entering the second half of the chapter and this is where things for the most part get a whole lot more difficult. I like the 1984 the reference. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, a whole lot of the levels are references. And yeah, this is a dick move dead <laughs> right here. Damn. I mean, this rocket should have landed on this one saw blade right here. I mean, you can't really get mad at it because, by the way, the level is shaped and all of this. This has one chance out of a million of, a p of happening, but even then, that still pisses you off. <laughs> Yeah, I kind of like how this one's structured almost like a non-linear sort of sandbox for you to sort of find your own way through. Yeah, basically I made this level because I thought that almost every single level in the chapter was pretty much always in rocket. So I was like, okay, I need an open level here. In fact, this level kind of reminds me of Hen for some reason. But yeah, this is where things can get really oh. insane. Yeah, you have to pretty much pay attention to what you're doing here because... Yeah, this one platform doesn't stop rocket, so you're pretty much circling all around your him and then boom. And the backtracking at the end can be rough too. I, I know a lot of people do that move, like you pretty much finish it and then you have to go back to where you came from. That's not my favorite thing. Yeah, but then again, I pretty much had to uh, justify the... Well, pretty much the nature of the level and all of this, but yeah, oh, I that's like this sort one of the thing. Yeah, that was one of the last levels that I've made for the chapter. In fact, it's really unlike every other level in the chapter. And this is one of the few levels in the chapter which really is speedrun friendly. I think it looks quite and beautiful, actually. I think it's probably one of the best decorated ones you made. Yeah, I think that for this one level, I was inspired by Minneapolis. Hmm. I mean, the chapter... 
not the yeah, city not the itself, movie. because I've never actually been there. And yeah, we went from one of the latest levels that I've made to one of the earliest ones, just in case you couldn't tell. Yeah, I remember playing this quite a few times and getting stuck on that last uh, room. Yeah, because, yeah, their rooms get nastier and nastier the more that you progress. Oh, and you do it and like I'll... a pro, I always fall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you just have to be really fast here. But, yeah, this level also was the source of another dick move that I've made because... Uh, oh, beautiful brown there, yeah. I just found out about the maximum numbers of characters that you can have in a Super Meat World level! <laughs> it's okay, we've all had it happen to us. Yeah, but concerning the other level that there was, I put the ending at the totally... at the beginning of the level, so you had to backtrack to the entire level, and there was saw blade shooting through the tiny corridor. I like so the, that the was the pretty much a dick move. Too, that's nice. Yeah. Oh, this is one of the earliest levels that I've made, and even back when I made this, I knew that this was gonna be at the end of the chapter. I love the and colors on each side too, that looks really nice. Yeah, I wanted to put all of the colors like that because, well, the name of the levels was, was called Hoob Says, just as in Simon Says, and I pretty much wanted the whole level to be like the little cube where all of the colors are at the sides in order to press them. It's a good concept, too. I feel like this is a little bit referential to one of the levels in the campaign, but I don't remember which chapter. I think maybe Salt Factory or something. Yeah, maybe. But it didn't have but a I know that the me, so that's good. Yeah. This level used to be a lot harder than it was earlier. In fact, you can see pretty much all of the little adjustments that I've done into the level here, because you can see all of those malfunctioning ro rocket launchers. Back when I first made this level, they were operational, but I decided, no, this is way too fucking hard. I could not beat this one, actually. I had to give up on it. Um, yeah, I'm not fact, sure if it was level... the new version of it, though. It might have been the old one. Yeah, it's probably the older one that had a whole lot more saw blade launchers and shooter. And yeah, this is pretty much an entrance round where you have to avoid all of these saw blades. Definitely a pretty what? looking level though, I really like all the clouds in the background and the nice pastel kind of pink. Yeah. Very cotton. Basically but Yeah. That was pretty much Hey, this is this level is pretty much the difficulty of the of the cotton alley, just in case that you couldn't guess. So yeah, this level, however, there was a couple of people that didn't like it because, well, truth be told, you're pretty forced through the one path of the level and you cannot go any slower or faster, so this is one strike against it. And yeah, this is the final level that I've made for the chapter, by the way, and I think it pretty much shows how much I've improved at graphical detail over the time that I've made this chapter. Yeah, I like the little graves, they're a nice touch. Yeah, I kind of wanted to make a more atmospheric level out. Oh, yeah, and the middle part of this level is a huge clusterfuck. Because, okay, yeah, in this one part you cannot hurry, because if you hurry, you simply get shot by all of the rockets around this part. But, oh, okay, uh, but whenever you get lucky like that and you get the saw blade launcher to kill everything, the rest of the level is really easy, but... The thing is, when you get to the middle of the level, you can simply get bang, gang bang by it. Uh, by the zombies, the saw blade launcher, the rockets, and the other zombies on the other side. And if you take too much time, there's even a fly joining in the party. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot of things going on here. And yeah, this is a level that I've made in order to replace an older version of the level that we're gonna see later on because, well, the first version was overly terrible. <laughs> This one's very rapture looking, and I think it actually captures that theme quite well in the uh, the gameplay of it as well. Yeah. The only thing that I really don't like about this level is the middle part, where you have to jump over saw blades. This one part, however, was pretty unimaginative, and I probably should have done something better with that. Oh, you know what else? The Kid's Christmas also it reminds me of that, the one where you have to keep jumping over uh, those in and out saw blades. Oh, yeah. Yeah, in fact, this is a chapter that I'm gonna have to play pretty soon. That was a hard So, one. we only have two more levels to go and make sure that I've saved the worst for last. In fact, I think that you know a little bit about this level. Um, I probably didn't beat this one either, actually. Yeah. Basically, this level is all about being in a constant state of panic. Basically, it's just like, there are those times where you kind of get an adrenaline rush. Well, you get an adrenaline rush here that lasts something like over 20 seconds, because 
It never stops. You constantly have to be taking into account everything which is going around you. And overall, this level is just insane. My problem is I keep assuming that I've died, so I, I pretty much am always expecting the run to be over at every few seconds. <laughs> yeah, it's not over until it's over. And here's the final level, which is named after Porcupine Tree because, well, they made an album called Fear of a Blank Planet, and their cover was pretty much in that style of color as well. In fact, the name of this chapter is a reference to Porcupine Tree and their latest uh, album, which was called The Incident. I did not know that. Yeah, and in fact, the there was an older name for this chapter, which I've taken b back when I was working on it. It was initially called Welcome to the Machine, but I had to drop the name because it was way too long for Super Meat World and, well, this was a reference to Pink Floyd, and it turns out that, well, Porcupine Tree at one point sounded a lot like Pink Floyd, so eventually I just traded in a reference for another reference. Yeah, this one has really beautiful details also. I really like the, the exact shade of dark blue that you chose to juxtapose against that sort of charcoal black-gray. It looks yeah. really nice. Yeah, too bad that the level is not as nice until the gameplay- Oh my god, I just got stuck on the wall here because I couldn't jump off of it. Jump off of it that time. And you know, this actually reminds me of a level I did called Tempo from the, uh, the Lime Key. Oh yeah, uh, wasn't it one of the last levels? Yes, it's towards the end of the, ch end of the chapter, and I think it's possibly one of the most infuriating levels in the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess that's fitting. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I was inspired by Master Blaster when I made this level. Nice. That, that one level in Cut and Alley where there were a whole bunch of hallways with rocket launchers, and I just thought, how could I make it harder? And that was the solution. You were successful. <laughs> yeah. That was the last level, because I figured that this would be the hardest level of the entire chapter, more so considering that it's a lot longer than most other levels in the pack. I mean, level 11, the Ministry of Love level, was as long, but it was nowhere near as difficult. So that's it for the incident! We've made it through successfully without dying too much, but we still have a couple of things to show you. This one level right here is the first version of the breakaway level that I've made. It's amongst my earliest levels that I've made, and I think it shows. In, in fact, well, this is really one of the levels that... I know that I had a lot of feedback saying nice things about most of the levels, but this was the one level that pretty much everyone agreed to say, uh, this level really is bad. <laughs> You know, it's funny, the concept I don't find to be that bad, it's just maybe a little bit bland looking. Yeah. But then again, most of the levels are about dodging off-screen rockets, right. and maybe this is why a whole lot of people didn't like it. And yeah, for people who are not aware of death mode, basically, you can... Whenever you finish a level, you become immortal, you can just go all around the place, and you just be successful. So this is an earlier version of level 4, and you will see that it's definitely different in a way that makes it about infinitely more difficult. Yeah, the platforms move twice as fast. Yeah, I'm pretty in sure that's the version I couldn't beat, because that, that is way faster. Yeah, not only it's a whole lot faster, but there is no middle platform between the two halves of the level. That's like the Dark World version. Yeah, pretty much. And there was an even darker world version of it, because at one point there was a rocket launcher in the oh. second half of the level. Of course there was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in fact, there was rocket launchers in almost every single level in this chapter before I went and did revis revisioning on most of these levels. A lot of revisioning has been done on these levels in order to make the difficulty more manageable, because I did not want this chapter to be too hard, and even then it still happened to be pretty difficult. You must have been jealous of that level from Cramps, the one with the, uh, the 20 rockets that shoot after you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so that's my solution of it, and yeah, by the way, this is what a level in development will look like. And as you can guess from the decoration, this is not a level that I finished and wanted to finish, because well, looking at it, you probably guess why I didn't want to finish this level. Pretty brutal, man. Yeah. In fact, one of the things that I've mentioned concerning my chapter was that there was not gonna be any rocket guiding gimmicks and anything like that. And basically this level is just me going, What the fuck are you thinking, you asshole? <laughs> that goes against everything that you've said. 
But yeah, basically the main reason why I took this level out was because it's complete luck. I mean, just look at all the all of the stunts that you have to pull in order just to destroy the walls without dying yourself. I mean, I mean, there's no skill involved. This is just random. The whole time I'm thinking, oh man, he's gonna make it through all the rockets and then he's gonna die on the three saw blades in the left corridor, and that'll just you'll have to throw the controller at that point. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> And we get greeted by a rain of rockets. And that, that'll be it for all of the bonus content of this chapter. And for this video at the same time. So, thank you very much Rockly Smile for guessing with me onto this one update. No problem, thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure and I will be back anytime you like me. Coming up next, Super Meat Boy visits Assembly. See colon slash Meat Boy.